What's up guys, Linux Noob here with another video. Now, in my last video, I spoke about the fact that how I was trying out a lot of different Linux distributions to see which one really suits me the best and finally settled down with Peppermint OS 6 again. Now, in that process, the final decision for me was hanging around between two major distributions mainly. One is of course Peppermint OS 6 and the other one was Manjaro Linux 15.12 Now ultimately for me Manjaro Linux ended up being the runner-up But in the meantime, I did use Manjaro Linux for about a month as my primary Linux distribution Now in this video, I'll be sharing what my experience has been like during that time using Manjaro Linux and my overall opinion about this distribution in general So without further ado, let's get started Now let's first talk about very briefly about what Manjaro Linux basically is. Now Manjaro is a distribution that is based on Arch Linux but it does a lot of things differently which makes it its own operating system rather than being another Arch Linux clone. Now while there are a lot of differences between Arch and Manjaro, in my opinion the big biggest difference has to be the fact that they don't use the official Arch Linux repositories they maintain their own repositories to provide and update softwares and to provide updates to the distribution itself. Now, while you can't really compare it to anything else in the Linux world, the closest com comparison that comes to my mind is uh, how really Ubuntu works. Now, we all know that Ubuntu is built and based on top of Debian, but it uses their own repositories and does a a lot of things differently the same way that Manjaro differentiates itself with Arch Linux. Now while Manjaro does a lot of things to differentiate itself from Arch Linux, it still has got support to the AUR or the Arch user repository. So you still have that option built into Manjaro Linux to download software directly from the Arch user repository and play with it. Now let's first start with the things that I actually liked about the distributions. Now first has to be the installation procedure. Now unlike Arch Linux, you don't necessarily need to go and install Manjaro via the command line interface. Of course that is an option, but at the same time it has its own beautiful graphical user interface installer which makes things as simple as they can be. Like, if you have ever installed any Linux distribution before, this should be right up your alley. It's as easy to install as any of the Ubuntu or Ubuntu derivatives are uh, to install. Now, the second thing I really liked about Manjaro is that it follows a rolling release model. Now, what that essentially means, it, it doesn't have a fixed release cycle for releasing major versions of the distributions, like the way, for example, Ubuntu does. It pushes update to the existing installation when it's ready and so you don't necessarily have to wait 6 months or 12 more months to get new features. Now this means that you install this operating system once and you stay updated almost all the time to the latest and greatest features and softwares as far as Manjaro Linux is concerned. Now this in my opinion leads to another major advantage and that's having access to bleeding edge software. Because it's primarily based on Arch Linux and it's also a rolling release distribution, you almost always have access to latest software. Now granted it isn't as bleeding edge as Arch Linux is, but that is something I actually liked about Manjaro compared to Arch. Now the Manjaro team do a bit more testing before releasing new features and updates compared to how much Arch does. Now when it comes to Arch Linux, it's just something new is created and they just do the basic testing and they just push the update immediately. That is not the case with Manjaro. They do a lot more testing in that sense compared to what Arch Linux does. So this essentially gives you another layer of stability over what vanilla Arch Linux offers. Now the fourth major thing that I liked about Manjaro is having access to the AUR. 
Now, from what my experience has been, almost all other Linux distributions that are not Ubuntu or Ubuntu-based distributions face a specific problem, and that is not having enough software available natively on them. But Arch Linux is an exception to that, mostly because of the AUR. In case you don't know already, the AUR or the Arch User Repository is pretty much the biggest repository that is available to the public when it comes to Linux software. If there is any software that has ever been created for Linux, chances are it's already in the AUR. So having access to the AUR eliminates pr the problem of lack of software as long as Linux softwares are con concerned. Now, if we go to the package manager of Manjaro, you'll see that AUR support is built right onto the package manager itself. Now, it's just about uh, clicking one button and you have access to the AUR. You just enable an AUR support from here and instantly you have access to everything that is available on the AUR. No need to go onto the command line. It's an excellent package manager and with AUR support built in, you shouldn't re really have any problem to get any software that you want and that is available for Linux. Now the last major thing that I liked about Manjaro Linux is the theming. Now I've tried a couple of uh, desktop environments on Manjaro Linux and regardless of what uh, desktop environment uh, it's running on, the Manjaro team really takes their time to make things look good regardless of the desktop environment again. Now right now how I have set up my, my distribution it's not really how it comes out of the box but I didn't really have to do much uh, to get it to this state and by default uh, as it looks when it comes out of the box it looks pretty darn good as well. Now I've made a couple of changes here like I've uh, moved this panel to the top I've installed this plank dock at the uh, at the bottom. I have changed uh, the theme to uh, I think it's called Menda Dark, and I've left it with the stop icon pack uh, that it came with, and it's already looking pretty darn good. So as far as theming is concerned, and uh, Manjaro Linux is really one of the those distribution that uh, takes that takes their time to make things look good. So these are pretty much the major things that I like about this particular distribution. Now that we have to, uh, talked about the uh, things that I actually liked about Manjaro, now let's talk about the complaints that I have, at least the major ones with Manjaro. Now the first major issue that I have with Manjaro has to be the stability. Now don't get me wrong, this Manjaro Linux is not something like it's completely unstable or something, in fact far from it, but it does come with its own problems and pretty much that is something if you want bleeding edge software and you want a rolling release model, this is something I think you have to do deal with. Manjaro team does a pretty good job of making their system stable, but still it has its own problems. In fact, in the one month that I was using it as my primary Linux distribution, I actually had to reinstall the entire system once. And there was a bunch of updates that was uh, that was pushed uh, onto my system. I installed it, restarted it, and somehow it ended up with a kernel panic, which left me with no other choice but to reinstall the uh, system entirely. So. Of course, it's a great thing to have bleeding edge software and a rolling release distribution, but this is something you have to deal with. Uh, so if uh, stability is your first uh, concern, Manjaro Linux is not probably where you should be looking for. Now the second major complaint that I have is somewhat related to the first one, and it is about getting proprietary drivers to work. Now this is not a problem spe specific to Manjaro as almost all the Linux distributions suffer from the same problem more or less except for the Ubuntu and Ubuntu based ones in my experience but it is a huge problem nonetheless. The open source drivers that it comes with are good to do certain things 
but there are certain things that the proprietary drivers uh, do a lot better for certain hardware for example the graphics drivers now I'm using an AMD uh, graphics card in the system and I haven't installed this time the proprietary AMD Catalyst drivers and I'll get to that in a minute why that is now the way the proprietary drivers are handled in Manjaro is most of the time not ideal to say the least. In my opinion, the best way to handle drivers in a system is the way it is handled on Windows. Where you get an executable file from the manufacturer's website, you download it and you install it and it just works. In Manjaro there are mainly two ways that proprietary drivers are installed when one is the way uh, that it is handled in most of the Linux distributions. You get the files from manufacturer's website, the generic files, go to the terminal, try to install it through the command line interface, select it manually to run by default and hope it works. The other option is to install it from the AUR and manually select it to run by default and again hope it works. Now, this is something that the Season Linux users are probably comfortable with doing, but I think, in my opinion, most of the casual desktop users are not willing to deal with. And even if you take the hassle of going through the entire procedure, there's always a chance that a new update is pushed either to the system itself or to the driver, and it completely breaks compatibility with the entire system. I actually faced this problem before the kernel panic that I once uh, had I was mentioning about before uh, a few minutes back in the video was actually related to the drivers where there were some updates that were pushed uh, more I think it wasn't really compatible with the catalyst driver that was I was already running and it just ended up in a kernel panic and ended me with no other option but to restart it sorry reinstall the entire system now if it was a problem with all the Linux distributions on the same scale I probably wouldn't have spoke for so long about it in this very review but the fact is in my opinion Ubuntu already has a solution that is better than this where you get a one-click install to the proprietary drivers that are available in their repositories now granted it's not always the latest one but it is somewhat close to it and at least it's better than not having one at all and also the drivers are somewhat tested to work with those distributions so handling of proprietary drivers is not as good as it can be in my opinion now the last major complaint I have about Manjaro is re regarding pre-installed software. Now personally I don't like a lot of software to be pre-installed onto the system. Now let's take a look at what Manjaro comes with. Now uh, first thing is uh, here not everything that you see comes pre-installed. Obviously I have installed the softwares that I use on a daily basis so they are included in there as well but I'll briefly mention what it comes with pre-installed. First of all, Adobe Flash Player. Okay, we can deal with that. These things I never ever use, so I don't even know what they do. Deluge is something that I have installed. Uh, E-Links, I'm not really sure how many people use that. Moving on, GIMP. Now, I use GIMP a lot but then again I'm not really sure how many people actually does and uh, is it worth it to pre-install it. Uh, this music player now Manjaro by default comes with two media players one is, the, one is this mu music player and the other one is VLC now VLC already plays all those music files so I'm not really sure why this is included. Hexchat I don't use it I doubt how many people does, how many casual desktop users does to be specific. So again, not really sure why it is pre-installed. HP Device Manager. I don't have a HP printer. I don't know how many people does and I'm not really sure is it worth it again to include for it in everyone's operating system even though if they don't have an HP device. 
Hidden Live and Kazam are two things that I've installed the entire LibreOffice suite. When I use LibreOffice, I'm mostly using LibreOffice Impress and Writer. I don't use the other ones. And again, if you want, it's not really hard to install. So again, not really sure why the entire suit is doing, except for taking up space for most of the people. Uh, OBS, again, is something I've installed. Uh, if you scroll down a bit more, you see the entire Qt development suit. Of course, developers use it, but I don't think most of the people that use Linux are developers. I'm talking here about uh, normal casual desktop users. They will probably never ever use it. So again, this is doing nothing else for them rather than taking up space. So you overall get the point where I'm going with it. Now I personally like a lean and clean operating system where the operating system will give me initially just the basic things that I need to begin with and from there I can install my own applications that I actually use rather than pre-installing so many softwares. In case of Manjaro, I probably used only 20 to 30 percent of the software as I just demonstrated on a daily basis. So uh, those softwares, the, all those other softwares are doing nothing but taking up hard drive space for me. Now granted, you can go ahead and remove all those softwares that we don't need, but, it's, but that is something I don't necessarily have to do. This is a reason I like Peppermint OS 6 so much. It just gives me the essentials and from there I can install all the softwares that I actually use. Now even on Windows that is somewhat the case. When you do a uh, clean in Windows installation from scratch it just gives you the essentials and we install the softwares that we use from there. It, this is something we are already used to so I'm not really sure what's the point of uh, pre-installing so many software that most of the people will probably uh, are not using. So that is what my opinion about Manjaro Linux is, both the positive and negative. Overall, I think it's a great distribution. Uh, of course, it comes with its fair share of problems, but at the same time, I think it is one of the best distributions out there for the desktop that the Linux community has to offer. If you can deal with the problems that I mentioned in the video, by all means, check out Manjaro Linux. It's a great distribution. Let me know what you think about it. As always, like the video if you liked it. Share your feedback in the comment section down below. And do subscribe to the channel for more Linux videos.